In this video, we're going to take a look at another sheet metal base feature called the lofted flange. And we're going to begin a new sketch. This is typically something you might see as a sheet metal transition. I'm going to do half of a transition from a kind of a square shape to a rounded shape. So if I'm going to do half of it, I'm just going to do kind of a, a U shape and then transition that to a curved arc. We set this up very similarly to what we did with the normal loft command inside of Inventor. I'm going to begin by selecting the XY plane here, and I'm going to create just a U shape around this. Go ahead and line up my midpoint here. Choose the right endpoint there, not just the line. Let me go ahead and make this bottom side here about 12 inches long. Make this here about five and a half. Make sure I line those up as well. Let me do a vertical alignment with the metal of the 12. And actually, let me make this just a little shallower. So that's one of my profiles that I want for my lofted flange. I'll go ahead and finish the sketch. And I need to create the other profile. And you don't do that on the same plane. You do that offset from the initial plane somehow. So I'm going to begin by selecting my plane tool up here in my work features. And I'm going to offset the XY out this way. And I want to go out about 14 inches. And that is the plane I would like to sketch on. So this plane has been offset from the origin plane about 14 inches there. I'll go ahead and select it and choose a new sketch creation on that plane. And I'll create just my little arc shape out there. Again, I probably want to control this the same way I did previously, making sure I line things up the way I want. I'm going to make sure these two endpoints are lined up together. I'm going to project maybe this back point here and this back point here and make sure those line up as well. I want to line up those centers up and down that way. So again, using smart choices for my origin, uh, the radius on this I'll have be five and a half, and the distance off of there I'll make about one and a half. For just visibility's sake, I'm going to turn off the visibility of this work plane just by right clicking on it there, and now I'm ready to create this lofted flange shape. I'm going to go up to my lofted flange tool. It wants me to select two different profiles in order to make this work. So I'm going to select this profile first, and this profile second. You will see a blending automatically taking place here. Again, this is a little bit different than a normal loft. A normal inventor loft has closed profiles typically, unless you want to create a surface. Here we have open profiles blending together. The sheet metal defaults are selecting what thickness that metal should be. And now I just have to go through a few more settings in here for how I want this to appear. Let's begin by looking at the two different types of outputs. Here you can see I have a press break output right now, so it has the faceted faces. I can also choose a die forming. A lot of people will choose die form, not necessarily because they have a die former, because it is a little bit more expensive, but because they don't care about how it unfolds because maybe they don't do that internally in their shop. And then I have somebody else fabricate it and it's their job to flatten this thing. So you might do this just to reduce the number of faces on your metal if you're not doing this actually in-house yourself. If you do the press break, though, when you flatten it, you will get the faceted faces flattened to get the bend order that you need on that. I'm going to do a faceted control here. And based on this, I can do a cord tolerance. I can do a facet angle and adjust the angles on the facets. I can choose a facet distance for you know how much each facet would be. Right there, it's a half. If I up this to one, you can see that it's going to change the distance of the facets. If I change the angle from 15 to 30, you're going to see that decrease the amount of faces I have there that are faceted. I'm just going to stick with the core tolerance of 0.1. For my unfold options, I can still change my unfold methods, but again, I'm using it by the rule. So whatever the rule says is what this is going to be. At this point, I'm ready to say OK. And there's my lofted transition. Now, with this, I can't go back and change it to die formed. 
I'd have to delete the lofted flange and say I want die formed instead of a press brake control. You can't just go back and modify it like traditional tools. What you can still do is change your sheet metal default. So again, if I want to make this out of 12 gauge stainless, I'll go ahead and adjust that and adjust my metal thicknesses, adjust the material for me. And when I flatten this one, it does flatten out to a pressed brake type of appeal. For now, I'll go back to the folded part there, and that's my lofted flange. So if I want to create the opposite side of this, because maybe they weld down the sides of it, that's a pretty easy operation. I could do a mirroring operation here. I could do a save copy as and just create the other half. You know, it depends how you want to approach this, but at this point here, I could just make two of those and they go together. So this has been a look at the lofted flange tool as a base feature for the Inventor sheet metal environment.